G'day guys, my name is Jim Infinite and today I'm going to be doing another unique analysis video. This time talking about two more items that dropped from the new Guardian bosses in Atlas of Worlds. These are the Snake Pit Ring that drops from the Hydra Guardian and the Eye of Innocence Amulet that drops from the Phoenix Guardian. And I'm just going to give a discussion on the viability of the uniques, how you could build around them, or what builds that you might slot these uniques into. So the first one I'm going to be talking about is the Snake Pit Ring. And this unique has very few mods on it, but I like it because it's very simple and effective. And I also like it because it's going to be helping out a few builds that are pretty lacking at the moment. You know, the draw card for this unique is going to be the extra spell projector mod, which is pretty damn cool. It's got cold damage. It's also got car speed thrown in for good measure. So you can make use of that. And it's a bit of a hint of what you're going to use it for. Uh, it's a pretty simple ring, so there's really not too much to analyze in terms of how you're going to build around it. Uh, it's going to benefit most projectile spells at the cost of a ring slot. You know, using two will effectively give you LMP, as in three projectiles for free, but that requires two ring slots, and I feel that that might be gimping yourself. So where this ring is really good for is, you know, it's good for spells that want GMP, but often have to settle for LMP. Uh, you'd probably use one ring in this instance, uh, use LMP and you get four projectiles, which is not too bad. It's, al it's almost GMP, right? Um, this is gonna fit with most of the cold spells, which barely get much use. And I'm looking at you, Freezing Pulse, Ice Spear, Arctic Breath, and even Frost Bolt. <clears throat> you could try using one of these rings, throw an LMP, and then get pick up the Deadeye Ascendancy and you'll get GMP. Five projectiles for only having LMP in your skill setup, which is pretty damn good. Alternatively, you could go use the Snake Pit Ring, pick up Deadeye, and then you have LMP for free. You know, it frees you up a gem slot. You don't have to use that and get the damage reduction. So that's pretty cool in my mind. Um, it's also gonna be decent for any spell that suffers from using LMP, but could make use of the extra projectile. And the first thing that comes to mind is ball lightning. You know, you usually use one projectile, the standard, uh, and that's not very good. So two is gonna help that skill out a lot. There's other spells that you could use it with, but in my mind, you know, it's not that great because not many spells these days run LMP or GMP anymore, like an old school freezing pulse, shotgunning build did back in the day. A lot of spells now are AOE, or they get innate projectiles like Spark, and they just already have enough projectiles. So there's a real niche here. Overall, it's gonna be good for a few niche builds, but one ring may not be enough in terms of stacking projectiles, and two may not be worth the gear slots for a free LMP and some cold damage. I think the good options here seem to be, you go the Snake Pit Ring, get LMP and Deadeye for fried projectiles, you get the ring, LMP for four projectiles, or lastly, you get the snake pit ring, dead eye for LMP, and then you free yourself a gem slot, which is pretty damn good. The choice is really yours, so let me know how you uh, plan on using this ring or how you might build around it, and uh, leave some thoughts down in the comments. The next unique is the Eye of Innocence amulet, and this one's pretty interesting. Looking at the mods, becomes apparent that you want to really ignite yourself. And that's pretty interesting mechanic. So you might ask, how are you going to do that? Well, the answer is Moku's Embrace. It's a ring that gives an innate 25% chance to self-ignite. So to increase those odds, you might want to be using two of them to get yourself 50%. I think that might be the way. Um, and the, the extra uh, kicker on this mod is that when you ignite an enemy, you get hit with 100 fire damage. And that 100 fire damage is going to have the 50% chance to self-ignite at a base duration of four seconds. Uh, so that's how you're gonna self-ignite primarily. You use a skill that ignites maybe Firestorm, maybe Flame Blast, up to you. The problem is that when looking at what we get from being ignited, it's not really that much. There are some good things, but it's not fantastic. So let's look at them. You can get 2% Fire Leech off of the amulet, which is not bad, not outstanding. You can get Leech elsewhere for spells for, for you know, Fire Leech. 
53% increased damage off the amulet. Now, I don't know how high this goes, whether there's a range, but, you know, that's pretty average. It's, you know, it's just another kicker. <laughs> the other thing, the other synergy is the hot-footed jewel, which uh, just gives you movement speed for being ignited. So it goes up to 15%, I think. So uh, throw that in there, why not? The other thing is actually with the synergy itself, the Moku's Embrace will give you 20% increased attack speed while ignited and 20% increased cast speed while ignited. And this is what I overlooked originally because if you're using double Moku's, that's 40% increased cast speed, which is pretty fucking ridiculous. It's pretty much like adding another faster casting gem to your setup. So that's pretty crazy. As I said, you want to be igniting enemies in order to trigger that self-ignite. You want something like Firestorm, Flame Blast. I'm sure there's other ways you can work around it. Any other skill that ignites. Uh, it's going to be cool because you get a lot of ignite chance from that gear that you're forced into. If you go the double perfectly rolled Moku's, you're going to get 20% ignite chance. 10% from the amulet. You might run Flammability Curse, which can net you another 15% ignite chance. You know, there'll be some from the tree, so you might get 5 to 10% naturally. So you're looking at about 50% ignite chance off the bat, which is pretty damn good. There are other, are other unique options that you could go for. I've seen suggested on Reddit that you could use the Ember Wake Ring, run one Moku's Embrace, and use a rabbit hitting skill such as Firestorm to rack up ignites because Ember Wake you know, it lets you get up to about 300 ignites on a single enemy, which is pretty cool. You're not going to get that unless it's a boss, maybe. But, you know, that's going to guarantee you a constant self-ignite. Uh, if you choose to go that Ember Wake route, another suggested option is the new Razor of the Seventh Sun unique, uh, which will give you insane life recovery per ignite and 100% increased burning damage if you ignite an enemy in the past four seconds. Pretty cool. You can also make use of the Death's Door unique boots to increase the duration of the Ignite on you by 50%, so that's going to bring it up to a 6 second self ignite. The next option, which I'm not sure about, is you could use the Cloak of Flame, but you lose out, of, out on a ton of life and resists. It will give you 10% more Ignite chance, and then you know the Fears to Fire damage taken will obviously help you again triggering a self ignite. So that is a that is a pretty decent option. Uh, in thinking of an ascendancy choice, I'd probably go elementalist for elemental conflux. You know, if you're going something like flame blast, it's going to at least guarantee ignites. You could choose to go something else, but you know, maybe chieftain. Who knows? Uh, you could grab when you're an elementalist. You can grab the paragon of calamity for reduce reflect. And because you're always getting hit by fire damage via the amulet, you're always getting a 40% increased fire damage buff and getting 8% reduced fire damage taken from that. Uh, overall, what are my concluding thoughts? Well, there's not a ton of synergy with igniting yourself. And, pardon me, the, uh, it requires two to three uniques to really get the self-ignite going. There's not a lot of payout for investing in two to three slots of gear. Uh, it's a unique heavy thing to do. And while it's possible that there may be more synergy added in the patch, I'm not too convinced about this. I'm sure somebody's gonna try and use this amulet as with a lot of uniques. But yeah, I'm not convinced. So Grinding Gear Games also have mentioned that you cannot use this amulet to abuse infinite Val Molten Shell. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, uh, I mean that uh, the chain or trigger chain is that you use Val Molten Shell, uh, you then ignite an enemy, the 100 fire damage hits you from igniting that enemy, which triggers Val Molten Shell, and then that Val, Mo <laughs> Val Molten Shell hits the enemy, ignites them, and it, it keeps the chain going so you can get an infinite. But yeah, I think the way that they've coded it must be that it's not possible. So anyway, that's just worth noting. Uh, that will wrap up today's unique analysis for the Snake Pit Ring and the Eye of Innocence Amulet. Feel free to leave your thoughts on these two uniques in the comments below. And subscribe for more PoE content. I'd much appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.